Hello and welcome to this edition of the Time with Heim podcast. I'm your host, Lynn Cordes, joined by our superintendent, Mr. Heim. What about that weather this weekend? Oh, wow. Wind, wind, wind. We can't get away from the wind. That's southwest Oklahoma. Hey, isn't it amazing? We do the podcast, the town, the community a lot, and had a special guest. He ran by the LRC to look, so, hey, we asked him to join the podcast, and he said yes. So, a Time with Heim today, we have a special guest Lieutenant Governor Matt Pinnell. Yay! Thank you so much for joining a time with him. Of course. I mean, I mean, a podcast named after you. Right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> hey, and I did not name it. It's kind of circling around. Somebody put it on Facebook and some of the people I went to high school with, because I've never I never tell people stories, but my nickname in high school was Heim Time. Heim Time. So now it's all over Facebook that my friends <laughs> from 40 years ago yeah. were putting well, why isn't it called Heim Time? And I said, I didn't name it. <laughs> I got I got PR people that stay above me that take care there of those things. That's good. Special shout out to Lynn for naming it. Nice. Well, it just makes sense, right? Yeah. It's that special time. And we're so excited to have you. Thank you for agreeing to come on. We of just course. wanted to share out what all the great things that are going on with Lawton Public Schools, but hear from you as well. So this is where Mr. Heim does his job and does it really well. So I'm going to kick it over to him. First thought. You got the tour, just a quick look at the LRC and understand it. Tell us what your thoughts are when you see that. Well, this is very impressive. Uh, I'm not just saying, I mean, to, to make the connection, to connect kids, I mean, to, to do life, right? To learn how to do life um, and to make sure that kids have every opportunity when they're in high school to learn those skills, no matter where they want to go. They may want to go to career tech, they may want to go to higher education facility, but, but to get into high schools, and really we're even talking about getting into middle schools and teaching those skills so the kids know what they're interested in uh, as they get through middle school, as they get through high school. Very impressed with what you're doing over here. Yeah, and I always say this. I was lucky when I came up with this idea and started it. I had Charlotte, you know, and people here in the community know that we kind of turned it over her, and she's one of those people – you give them something and get the heck out of their way. and Or, or she'll run, if I try to get in her way, she'll just run over me, so it doesn't yeah. matter. You know, the, uh, well, tell us, you know, as a lieutenant governor, when you see education across the state and local high schools, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I mean workforce, workforce, workforce. You know, every, every conversation that, that I have when, we, when it comes to K-12 through education, higher education, it, it's making sure that we have a trained workforce that's ready uh, we want to also obviously have the jobs here in the state so that we're not just training up kids and they're crossing over invisible lines into other states. But, you know, our teachers in, in these schools, I mean, they're the best economic development directors we have. When we have good teachers and good public education across the state, then that creates an environment that businesses want to move into and businesses want to stay in those communities as well. Lawton does an amazing job of that. And, and that's a conversation that I'm constantly having. I spend a lot of my time with the Department of Commerce. Uh, as we're talking about growing businesses in Oklahoma or recruiting businesses to the state. We, it's very rare that we have a conversation that doesn't revol revolve back to, tell me about your education system. So one thing that will surprise you when I visit with the FISTA, which you're going to do some yes. conversations with them, they talk about these jobs they're going to bring in and create. I always tell them, uh-uh, I want you to create the jobs for my graduates at Bingo. Lawton Public Schools. So we're working with this, this, what we're doing here at the LRC and other things to create those jobs students that are able for those jobs if Great. you were given high school students and even middle school students advice today as you look at the workforce and look at where we're going you know one thing we talk about is you know in, in our lifetime mine a little bit longer than yours just a day or two just <laughs> <laughs> but you know we're getting to the point where the jobs our students are going to hold or, or don't exist that's right so when you advise students today our high school and middle school students what would your advice be to them as they prepare to to become life ready or life after school yeah well life ready is the perfect way to describe it for but but you're right i, I mean we talk a lot about aerospace industry in oklahoma that, that's a good example we're pretty sure that we're on to something in oklahoma when it comes to aerospace the defense industry is uh uh, industry that we have as well. We have all these military bases in the state that we've preserved. And you have a lot of companies moving to Oklahoma that want to do business with these military bases. So we know we're on to something there, but even the jobs on those military bases or, or inside a aerospace company today, the job may literally not exist today. <clears throat> 10 years from now, it may be a completely different mechanical engineering position. Uh, and, and so, I, you know, kids in middle school and high school, the foundation matters. Reading, writing, and arithmetic still matters. 
Um, and, and so make sure that those founding, the, those foundation building blocks, that they have a very good foundation. Um, I would also say, you know, leadership uh, training. You know, I, I was blessed that when I was in middle school and high school, I took a lot of leadership classes, a lot of speech classes. Uh, I talk about FFA and 4-H programs in Oklahoma. You know, if you want to train, you know, change the world, I just say it's, it's pretty easy if you want to change the world. Just put every kid in 4-H or FFA uh, because, you know, the, the speech training that they get in that, um, I, it, there, there's a difference when, 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 I, when I see kids that have had that kind of experience in middle school and high school, uh, learning how to give a speech, learning how to interact, learning how to do an interview, interview process, those social skills that unfortunately, because of we're all addicted to these iPhones, right, that, you know, we got, we're training up kids today, and they may be real smart, but can they do an interview? Can they talk to somebody? Uh, and, and that's, you know, you talk about life skills. We have to make sure that we're training up kids with those kind of skills, too. You'll be happy to know one of the things we're expanding here at the Life Ready Center is we're bringing all of our ag programs to the Life Ready Center, and, and with the seed money or, or the first grant, a big grant from the McMahon Foundation, we're going to build an ag mechanic shop here so all students in our district have access to that ag mechanics, and they all have access to all of the FFA or vocational agricultural programs we offer. So right up your alley, we're trying to expand that. Again, you know, we talk a lot about, and kind of goes in with you said, we want to create opportunities and knock down roadblocks. And that's a tough thing to talk about, but not give high school kids those. So, you know, we thank you for joining us today. Share anything else you got that you'd like to say just uh, with an open mic here. Well, absolutely. I mean, listen, I mean, as lieutenant governor, uh, kind of the chief salesman for the state, uh, I'm in all 77 counties. And we have to remember that we don't have just two counties. I mean, I'm glad with Tulsa and Oklahoma City are thriving right now, but we have 75 other counties. And for us to be the top 10 state that we all want to be, that means growth in rural Oklahoma. Uh, That means growth outside of just our metro areas Uh, over the next 10 years. It truly is a 10-year plan for us. When we do the census again, 10 years from now, and count everybody in the state, where do we want to be as a state? Uh, We have 3.9 million people in the state of Oklahoma today. We need to grow more than that. Uh, we, We need, for Lawton to grow, any company looking to relocate is going to want to see that there's a workforce there. So that means training up our kids that have an opportunity to stay in these communities like Lawton in southwest Oklahoma, and that's going to be a big priority of mine as your lieutenant governor. And that's one thing, just to, to kind of wrap it up from my side, you talk about the companies. One thing we want to do at the LRC and our full partnership we have with Cameron and Great Plains, because we, we're unique here that we have Cameron, Great Plains. Very so unique. We, and that partnership – that we form with, with you know, with a 14,000 student school is we want to open up the LRC to companies to come in and help us develop curriculum and classes and how do we prepare our graduates to go to work for you. Yeah. So that's kind of the next step because if their jobs aren't going to exist, they need to tell us what training they're going to need to work for them in 10 years and hold those 100000 or $200,000 jobs. So anyway... Yeah. Thank you so much Absolutely. for just taking that few minutes out of your time to join us. And uh, shout out to Lynn and her team for putting it together, boom, real quick and getting this set up. And and uh, we'll let you get on your way. And, and, and people always say that between me and Charlotte, we'll take all of your time and the rest <laughs> of them will get shut out. But we're glad you stopped by. Thanks again. Yep. Absolutely. Always love being a lot. And I'll, I'll come back sometime and do a little bit more Heim time sometime. There you That's go. It. It's time with Heim. <laughs> Help me out here. And we know you're going to see and speak with a lot of wonderful people in our community. So thank you again for popping on and, and sharing a little bit with our community. Thank you so much. Hey. Appreciate it. Mr. Heim, we did talk about the weather in the beginning. It was a little bit scary Saturday night, but we got through it. Yes. So that just reminds our families about the importance of this time of year. Yeah, storm, and- storm, storm, storms. Always real- realize we have a procedure for if a storm comes, and that includes, you know, shelter in place. And so if if the sirens are going off, please don't come try to get your child because we're going to be in shelter in place and we're not going to let them go. We understand that it's your child and you need them, but we can't open up because that endangers the other students. So please, you know, follow our safety pr- protocols, but you as well, because most storms hit in the evening after the students leave school, although they're still that dangerous while we have shelter in place and we continue to build our storm shelters or or, uh, safe rooms, and we're going to continue to add those to our other elementaries as we move forward. But, you know, 
pay attention, have your own safe space, space or your hidey hole, as some people call it, so that you uh, you know where you're going when that's when those sirens go off. Absolutely. Now we have a lot of great things. We are in our last week of April. We have wow. two big events this week that I want to remind, and then we'll share about what's happening in May. But we have our Indian education program tomorrow night. The graduation celebrating. So, yep, the uh, senior awesome. recognition. I'm so glad that's in person again because it hasn't been in person. I'm excited. To- They've asked me to do the introduction. Very honored to get that invite. So uh, I'll be there and very excited to uh, be a part of that. And then for our community members that want to apply for a teaching position, we'll have our teacher career fair on Thursday from 4 to 6 at Central Middle School. So we're really looking forward to that. Yes, very much. Good. Lots of things going on. Please get on the website, get at your local school's Facebook page website, and look, there is so much going on. I was looking at my calendar. There's something every night, every day. Make sure you're uh, paying attention and don't miss those activities or events you want to be a part of. And we're winding down testing, and that's been really successful, and our kids have done a great job. (laughs) But in May, I know, take a breather for a minute. In May, we have AP testing. So if you do hear about that, that'll be out on our websites for our secondary and on the district one. And then remind them about, in May, some of the look-aheads as far as big events that we have. Well, we have the uh, showcase which is going to be new to me because with the COVID, I haven't been a part of it, but it's our elementary talent show, as I understand, two nights worth. How exciting. I'm looking for that. May the 10th, huge night that we're going to celebrate our Teacher of the Year and and our first-year teacher and a lot of other awards. Also, I think our Vocational Agricultural has a big event on May 10th. Same night, yes. We do not like things to conflict, but that's just part of it when you're as large as we are. Lots of things going on. Uh, obviously, graduation is the 19th and 20th. Be sure and check for your school and time because we, we run three graduations through. So we're we're very excited. All those graduations are in the Coliseum this year. For the high school, yes. For the and high then school. promotions down to the second, yep. uh, the middle school. They'll yeah, have all your that. local promotions and things, they'll have those. So we're very excited about all that. And then I'll sh- give a shout out too. We have the mental health fair on May 14th. And we will be pushing more of that information out. But that's going to be a really big project with our Project AWARE grant and the community members. And remember, if you have questions, comments, or concerns, info, info at lawtonps.org. Please email us. Hey, we're always looking for guests. Sometimes we get lucky and the lieutenant governor walks in and agrees. That was awesome for us. But please share with us your thoughts and concerns. You can always go to our website, lawtonps.org, and get information. That's it. And Mr. Heim, I'm so excited. We have a lot of great things, but we're going to get back out there and work for our kids and share some wonderful things happening on our social media. So, you know, be sure to stay tuned. Until then, Mr. Heim, thank you again for your time. Be well, you guys. Stay safe. And until next week, have a great one. Bye-bye. Bye.